there. Today I'm going to look at this Android TV box and its associated uh, wireless keyboard. Hi there, well I thought I'd make a quick video for this Android TV box. Uh, the story behind this was I was in Tesco earlier in the week and saw an Android TV. I think it was a shop and it was massive. It was 65 inches and it was £500. Well, that sounds like a good buy, but I don't need a new television. My existing Sony one's okay and it's 32 inches, which is a lot less like massive to fill the room up. Um, so... Uh, I then looked on the web when I got home to see what whether they did any smaller Android TVs, and there are from unknown makes like Cello. Uh, but also something that um, came out in the search results, which I was quite interested in, was Android TV boxes. Now these all seem to be weird, unbranded things, or mostly, um, and uh, they were very cheap indeed, starting at about thirty pounds and going upwards. Um, and this is the one I eventually ordered off Amazon, the T95, uh, basically based on its specifications. The reviews were, um, there weren't very many reviews, so it was a bit of a risk. Anyway, this has got 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of flash memory, uh, which is um, towards the top end of the specifications. And it's also running the um, a newish version of Android, Android uh, 10, whereas lots of them only run Android 8 and maybe are only... Um, one gigabyte of uh, RAM and 16 gigabytes of flash memory. So that arrived within a day very quickly. Looks quite nice on the outside, doesn't it? It's like a glossy case. Uh, this is the front, I think, and it has a display which lights up when it's turned on, which normally shows the time or boot when you're booting up. Some enunciators for telling you um, various things like internet connections, whether you're playing media. There's a blank side. That side, if I can get it in the picture, has two USB sockets. They're USB 2. Some of the alternatives did have USB 3 support, but this doesn't. And a slot for an extra memory card. Micro SD card. Then on this side, we've got a 3.5mm jack labelled AV which is certainly sound and probably also composite video, as you'll see when I look inside this box. A wired Ethernet socket, a HDMI connector, and a 5 volt external power connector. Also in the box, which is a fairly plain black cardboard box, uh, comes a TV-style remote control, without any batteries, a 5 volt 2 amp power supply and a fairly basic H HDMI lead which does appear to be screened so it's not complete rubbish and a very thin instruction manual. This is in goodness knows how many languages so there's only five pages of English, four pages of English maybe, which just run through the main very rudimentary functions including how to reflash the box. I also bought in the same package, it came with this uh, keyboard, this QWERTY keyboard. And from the instruction manual for this, uh, it appears there are two versions of this. One takes AAA batteries. This one actually has a lithium rechargeable battery, which is obviously a much better option. And it comes, this is a, a USB receiver for it. So it's wireless to the USB receiver. The USB receiver can be stored inside case. This feels quite pl cheap and plasticky. Most of these remote controls have like tactile click buttons which are quite nice and this also has backlighting in three different colours. So this is also a clicky remote control which is quite nice. Uh, nowhere in the instructions does it really explain things. That takes you to the home screen, that takes you back in the menus, that switches the um, arrow keys between um, navigating between things on the screen and a mouse mode when you've clicked that it turns it toggles it to mouse mode and back. You'll see at the top here there are five buttons to control your television on off, sound up down and mute and um, 
source selection. Now these didn't work at first on my Sony television and I had to look on the internet how to reprogram those. You'll see there's a little hole here which is an LED that lights up when you press a button. If you press and hold the TV on button for a while, say about 5 to 10 seconds, that light comes on permanently and that means it's in programming mode for those buttons. And then once it's once that light's on permanently, you press one of these buttons, whichever one you want to reprogram, point your television remote control at the sensor on this remote control, and press the button on your television remote control, and that stores that saves the um, command into this remote control. Then when you finish, you press the OK button to exit the learning mode. So that's how you get those buttons working. So having connected it up and turned it on, uh, the first thing that struck me was how quickly it um, boots up. So if I turn it on now and you'll see the display come on on the box which is just up here. And obviously it's coming on on the screen. It says boot at the moment on its screen which you can't see on the video but in mind. I'm waiting for it. it seems really slow to turn on but hey it does this like animated animated logo p95 at the start and then it should go to the android home screen which is here which all looks pretty basic compared to your normal android home screen so you can get different launcher apps maybe that look a bit more like the normal android uh, but this is the one that comes on the device. On the left hand side of the screen you've got three main icons. The first one is the home screen which is this. The second one gives you a full list of apps. When I got the box it probably had about 15 apps, mainly streaming apps on it. I've added a few games and things. I'm more interested in using it as a web browser and things than streaming. And then the third one uh, is for settings and you can go into a setting and get a more normal Android type menu. Down the bottom here you've got two little icons. The paintbrush closes any running apps and cleans your cache using a pre-installed app. And that one gives you a list of apps and you can uninstall an app. If we go back to the home screen, we can see you've got sort of tiles there. Uh, the large tiles, the Google Play, the YouTube, Chrome and My Files, you can't change. Uh, the small tiles on the right here, you can change if you click on them and hold. You can get a list of apps and you can assign an app. Uh, the clock was originally wrong until I connected to the internet. Um, just running through some of the buttons on the remote, you've got the buttons for the uh, TV that I was talking about. At the top, you've got the top left on-off button for the Android TV. That's the only way of turning it on and off, unfortunately. You can't use the, um, other, remote, the other QWERTY keyboard. Uh, you've got some media buttons, uh, volume and Forward, track forward and backwards. You've got an app button which takes you directly to the list of all apps. You've got a KD button which runs the KD Player app, which is a streaming service. Then on the central island, you've got a home button that takes you to this home screen. A back button to take you back through menus. A bit like the back button in normal and uh, Android. Arrow buttons and an OK which cycle through things on the screen or you can press this arrow button here bottom left below the central island and that puts you in mouse mode and then the arrows move the mouse around and OK is like a mouse click. So if we go into the browser now, if I press this bottom right button that brings up a sort of context menu if the app's got a compatible menu and then you've got 
a number of buttons down the bottom, a backspace button and a web button to take you directly into the browser. Now you should be able to do everything using this remote control. So if I go into a text box, you should get an on-screen keyboard up. But I've done something to this box and it no longer appears, even if I change the options for the keyboard. But I'm not really worried about the on-screen keyboard. It's a right pain anyway. I'd rather use the QWERTY keyboard. Any buttons to run through on the QWERTY keyboard? Not really. You've again got arrow buttons to cycle around. Things are OK. But you've also now got direct access to the mouse. You don't have to switch between the arrow key mode and the mouse mode. So you've got some left and right mouse buttons. I don't think the right mouse button does anything in Android. Just the left mouse button. You've got a normal QWERTY keyboard here. Escape takes you back through the menus. Uh, left and mouse button on the left as well as below the pad. Some buttons are obviously more suited to a PC. This thing can be used as a PC keyboard as well as with Android. Also, I can't get up to installed a uh, email program. The email button doesn't work, but other things like the uh, web browser button and the home button work okay. Uh, what else is there to tell you about? Oh yes, if we go into the Google Play Store, uh, on Android TV you don't get a full um, version of the Play Store, you get a special um, version for Android TV, although it seems to have a lot of apps in mind, so I'm not sure if I get the full version or not on here. Um, supposedly on the Android TV version, uh, you um, don't get any in incompatible apps, uh, so anything that relies on multi-touch, because you're just using a mouse or um, cycling around things, you can't use any games or anything that use multi-touch like I put crazy taxi on and you have to steer and do the accelerator at the same time and that doesn't work really you can only do one at a time and any apps that will only run in portrait mode that don't auto rotate uh, to landscape uh, or don't rotate to landscape won't work I put um, five dice on here which is a sort of Yahtzee game and because it's written for uh, portrait mode, you only saw the top of the uh, playing board and you couldn't get to the bottom half. Yeah, but there's a good number of apps on here, if I get out of whatever weird mode it's in now. Oh, I can't see my remote from where I'm standing. Yeah, so you've got um, loads of apps. I was worried at first that when I did a um, Google search on it, it said maybe you only got on the dodgy website I was looking at, it said there are only a few apps, but there are loads and loads. And I've put Outlook on here, so I've put a full email system, which looks just like it would on any other um, Android device, if I load Outlook up. So yes, that's a quick look at Android TV. And I think it's really good, especially since they sort of start at about £20. So you can get fully functioning, almost, Android on your television. It saves you buying a tablet or something. If you want a bigger screen than a phone. Thanks for watching. And I've made another video taking the box apart as well, so watch out for that.